Yoruba, children of Odudua, a great tribe with well-developed culture and tradition, a race that has commanded influence around the world. For hundreds of years, the Yoruba people had lived together in harmony, peace and love. The peace in Yoruba land is powered by two beliefs, that they are all descendants of Odudua and that Ileife is their ancestral home. The Yoruba people also made use of so many things to bring about unity in the land, including festivals. Yoruba people, we have sort of background where we respect our elders. Once we have that respect, there's bound to be unity. Unity is based on respect, mutual respect for each other. We all know our source. A typical Yoruba man should know his source. Because by not being together, we are losing a lot. It's because of politics. However, in recent times, Yoruba land was ravaged by disputes, clashes and wars, which had dealt a great blow on its ancient culture of peace, love and unity. Many Yoruba wars have been fought in recent times, but the bloodiest, longest and the most devastating is the Kriji War. The war broke out in the late 16th century and lasted for about a hundred years. Before I originally thought that was unity, all of the violence, but in 1793, there was a big war that actually started with ravaged in Banat. This war actually destabilized the Banat for 100 years because the war lasted for 100 years. So it was that war that brought the destabilization of the unity. The bloodiest period of the war started in 1877 and lasted until 1886 when a peace treaty was signed on the 23rd of September the same year. When we talk of artillery corps, it was Yoruba people that established artillery corps in 1880 mm. by Labinjo. Mm. So it was the gun they brought, the cannons that they brought, that when you operate it, it was, it was the sound. Kriji. That is why we have the name Kiriji War. Kiriji war. Okay. So when the Badan people, the Badan warrior, when they heard this, they say, oh, they just uh, they have brought their wisdom again, you oh, what is Kri? They are going to be gone used to say Kiriji. So that's how we get the name Kiriji War. It was very, very important and it will continue to take the pride of peace among the historical things that happened in Yoruba land. Of course, it happened, it started in all in 18. Seven, and uh, of course it spanned for about 15, 16 years or thereabout. And uh, it started principally uh, by resistance of our people, by our people here. Because these Ibadan people, they came here because of the Ilori war, the jihad, which has spread to Ilori. And of course, Everybody wanted to protect his community. And Ukemesi was not an exception. Uh, but by that time, uh, the, 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 the Ibadan people, we believe they have, they were professional warriors. And it's like they came here, let's okay, let's see how we can protect all the rest of uh, the urban lands so that the jihad war will not spread to this area. But these people that were asked to come and assist in protecting the communities, they really became the terrorists. So they started using our people the way they wanted. And that was all over the place, not only in the PT, up to the president of Shun State, of those State, everywhere. And of course, at a point, it got to a level whereby we could no longer stand it. And one of our sons, Fabumi, popularly referred to as Fabumi or Aralada, started the resistance. That was the beginning or genesis of the war. And of course, when it started the resistance, you know, it got to a level whereby you would be going with your uh, a wife to be and they would take her from your side and go and do whatever they like with her. in your presence, of course. And of course, our well, you know, we have cultures, we have traditions, they started to interfere with everything. So there was no freedom. Let, let, let me put it in that way. 
our freedom was tampered with. And of course, when the people's freedom is tampered with, there is no way it, it will not go to your nerves. And a sort of resistance will start. Of course, that was exactly what started, what caused the war. So there was a very fierce resistance because the Ibadan, a jealous believe nobody can could talk to them. Nobody could stop them from what they were doing. Our son then, Fakumi, started that resistance. And of course, he killed one of the Ajeles then. During the Creed War, a lot of lives were lost. For, for the Yoruba people to appreciate this life, we need to remember the Creed War. It is appropriate to let our children know what happened to us. It's free. Perhaps we not forgive us if we simply put it aside and say, oh, it's gone, forget it. It is just to help us to remember where we were coming from and where we are today. Supremacy is the high confederate. Okay. And the confederate by that time, the camp was headed by Ugedengwe of uh, Elisha. Elisha. So, but uh, it was uh, Fabumi that started the war. And how did the war started? As I've said earlier, the Badan, they call them Ajeles. Okay. So they used to send their people outside the Badan, up to Ikiti, to go and administer them. So during any market day, the Ajeles will send his um, messengers to the market. Whatever they have in the market, they will pack everything, including women. Hmm. That are, that were fine. Falola is the wife of uh, Fabome. Mm -hmm. She went and uh, plated her hair, and at the same time, to buy palm wine for her husband. So when uh, uh, Ajele saw the name of Ajele, that was Oye Petun. That's when the name of that Ajele. is Oye Petun. That means he's a lead Ajele. Yes. So okay. when he saw this woman, you know. You, you, he sent for her, law into his uh, backyard, and did as he used to do with the other women. So when the wife got home, you know that time, uh, they were faithful to their husband. So whatever happened, they will narrate it to their husband. It's not nowadays that uh, even if, uh, if you are caught, <laughs> they will try to deny. You know? But that time, so that time, the woman, when she got home, she told her husband what happened, what transpired between her and Ajele. Then the uh, husband said, Ah, Kilo Kolumike. In my domain, call him Fabome or Aralada. He went inside and brought his sword and cut the heads of the two emissaries. Emissaries. Making three Ajele. Making three Ajele. He sent the, the two heads into the, the calabar that uh, Ajele sent. So they should take take it back, back to, to Ibadan. To Ibadan. <laughs> now you got to know that yes, trouble has started. No sleeping, no resting. That yes, but now we are going to take ourselves from this Ajele because they are over usurping their power. So he ran to his mother's town, which is Ogoton. When they met them, so he has caused trouble. He narrated what happened between him and the Ajeles and uh, Latosa. That uh, he knows quite all that uh, there is going to be war. So from there, he went to Ilanogun, Ido. So he told most, almost all the friends uh, of us that we were subjected to this Ajele uh, because everybody was fed up. Of the pressure. Yes. Of the... So they want freedom. The question most people are asking is this. Has Yoruba people been able to reconcile and return to the Asian culture on love and togetherness after so many years of bitter conflict? Before the war, Yoruba was, uh, you know, a, a, a basin in, in the Angoli League without any disruption. But it was that war that took place in 1793 that caused the disunity. 
do the war was brought an end by the signing of a peace treaty, which is known as the Kiriji Ikitiparako Peace Treaty of 23rd September 1886. But the war continued, we have some skirmishes so up to 1893. So since that 1893, Yuba appeared to be on the crossroads because they don't want to have the experience of war again. So people tend to manage their affairs and protect their kingdoms jealously. For Yorubaris to become truly globally recognized, achieve the sole purpose of uplifting its people out of poverty and solve all problems, both in the present and the future, there need to be unity and oneness among its people. So how can this be achieved? Yoruba uh, should endeavor to have a social-cultural social -cultural platform that will bring all of them together. They must remember that they have the same origin same origin like Ududua, you know, uniting them together. So they should go back to the source of Ududua. Because it was that Ududua, you know, uh, uh, consciousness that brought that unity. But they all believed that, you know, they actually come out from Ududua. So it was that Ududua uh, consciousness that they should embrace, fine tune it and make sure they have a home for Yoruba. Many notable sons and daughters of Yoruba land have established groups and associations meant to foster peace and unity in Yoruba land. But it seems that such laudable and commendable effort have not been able to achieve its sole purpose. It is for this reason that the Odudua Descendant World Assembly is established to help foster unity in Yoruba land in order to bring about peace and progress. The more we would have that type of exercise, the more united we are differences would disappear. And um, development, what is more important is that the Yoruba people will develop. Our children and children's children will grow to, to admire the, the nation to which they belong. The social cultural platform is very, very important because that will stand as the home of all the Yorubas, irrespective of any political affiliations. Yoruba Descendant World Assembly's main purpose is to serve as the apex social cultural organization representing the interests of Yoruba people, not just in Nigeria but all over the world. Choose the right people with clean mind coming together to think about the race, not, not about their pockets or from where they come from, about the race that is starting the hand that they will not be successful. You think about the race first before your pockets. What is happening in Nigeria is you think about your pocket first before the race. So if they can think about the race, yeah, 100% Because we have the social cultural effects but you know, they cannot just be so free to say anything they like or to take any action without recourse to the uh, traditional rulers. The traditional rulers are the one, you know, to be in charge of the apex spot. So, for example, like the comfort which is going on now, you know, Individual groups cannot just nominate themselves. They cannot just think of what to, to go and sit there. They have to refer everything to the apex body. They do not have meeting there to decide what to be said when they get there. It is the apex, apex body that will be sending them to that comfort. They are not expected to send themselves there. You understand? Because there must be proper thinking. Because the best body will contain think tank, Yoruba think tank. You understand? 
So not just groups. So that when you send people to that conference, the Yuba is the one sending them there. Not just individuals, a politician or other man manipulating, you know, their you know, recommendation or whatever. The apex body, so which means we go to speak in one voice. It's like, you know, a family, a family house. Okay. That family house is sending their representatives to certain place or town's meeting. You know, the people they are going to send must have been properly briefed. They are they, they will be given mandate. This is what you are going to say and this is what you are going to press for. This is what you're going to bring back. So that is the essence and importance of a social cultural APS body. If they then think of bringing the universe together, you can be long to any party you like, you'll be successful. But once they bring in politics, it will fail. In order for the public to easily understand its purpose and objectives, the Odudua World Assembly has instituted what is called the A to Z Purpose. This is a 26-point agenda of which the organization aims to achieve. To the organization, achieving the A to Z Purpose will bring about a better life for the Yoruba people all over the world. Muremi, you know, did her best to save her people and rescue those that were seized, you know, or kidnapped, he volunteered, he volunteered to do that work. I will know did his best by introducing free education, bringing light to his people. And everybody in Uganda, I would say, uh, uh, the beneficiaries or beneficiaries of free education, most cases. So, it is important that everybody must do his or her best and die with the consciousness that they have done their best. It's very important that every individual, you know, must pick, I mean, must pick certain assignment that must be executed or accomplished successfully, you know, to the benefit of uh, his or her people. You are just a new paradise. The moment we are able to implement the A to Z purposes, it's a new order entirely, a new order. We only pray to God to give us the will with them wisdom and everything, to be able to execute the A to Z purposes of the Rudra World Assembly. The moment we can take it one by one, you know, seriously, you, you, you see, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, I would say the A to Z is just the Bible and Quran of the Yoruba people. The moment they can implement it, they are going to be a new world entirely. A new world, like conflict resolution, once it is established, all the differences you have in, in your land, that committee will handle it and we will settle it. We will settle it amicably. They will remember their origin, they will remember their source, where they come from. So there will be no bitterness. So all those things we pull down as the A to Z purposes of uh, establishing this body. You know, I would say they were divinely taught out. Just a um, you know, group of people trying to make money, receive money from people, or make it nice. No, we, this is a pragmatic project. And we have our intention to see that it is properly established and is functional. We sell the ideas. If we need to prostrate, we prostrate to every one of them. But you see, in our evolution now, Yoruba land, we've come to a stage when we should be able to do things properly. Every Yoruba man is in a position to do things properly. Every Yoruba woman 
put me in a position to do things properly because we have lights. Except you want to be mischievous. If you are not going to be mischievous, nobody is going to uh, yes, give any sermon that I must not to do things. I mean, look at where we are coming from. Real civilization. Civilization that is surrounded with light, with education. Development of mind and everything. Uh, no matter how small a river person is, he knows how to do things properly. You see, because his mind has been developed. The job of bringing about unity of more than 50 million people is not easy. This is why the Uruguay Descendant World Assembly have come up with a number of projects to help facilitate their activities in order to achieve its A to Z purpose in a gradual process. One of such projects is the authoring of the book, The Directory and Compendium of Yoruba Monarchs. The book contains contact information of many Yoruba monarchs. It also contains information about major tourist sites in Yoruba land and very educative research papers. So that book essentially is to remove communication barriers that is prevailing in Yoruba land among the robbers. That is the first thing. People are right in their houses, no communication, no interaction with outsiders. So the only thing we think you can do is to have the directory of all these monarchs with their addresses, with their telephone numbers, with their emails, and other things. So any monarch that's interested in, 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 a, in a sort of a friendship, communication and all that, then they can easily look into that directory, call a wall for a book, call Baba no people, call Aujale, call Nanaki, you know, but if you don't have a book like that, there's no way they can contact themselves. Another gigantic project the Odudua Descendant World Assembly is planning is to execute the Odudua World Headquarters. This is like a United Nations headquarters for the Yoruba people. The Odudua World Headquarters will become the global centerpiece for the interest of Yoruba people all over the world. The headquarters will contain everything from the main assembly center to the sports complex. Here, all issues affecting Yoruba race will be discussed and progressive decisions will be made in a very comfortable environment. What Prince Ashagi is thinking now, this World Odudua Congress, Maybe something better will come out of it. When Udua was established, Udua, Edward Udua was established. Everybody was a member. But when Papa Olo and Chief Akitola separated, then the problem started. But people like Ashai coming up now. We have OPC there. They are on the security side. They are doing their best. Both fasting one another. Both of them are doing their best. We have um, Yoruba Unity. We have all sorts of organizations. But we still need one, a parent one. I can speak, they can speak with one voice. They have sent the whole Yoruba into this nation. Having this sort of uh, project in hand and building such, I will call it a gigantic building, we create an avenue for the Yorubas to come together and then realize whoever hasn't actually realized his source, we know his source. And not only in Nigeria, all over the world, people will come around and say, yes, we have a source. And when you can trace your source, when you realize that you belong to somewhere, I think it's, it's fantastic. It's, 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 a very good, um, it's a very good idea and I hope, I believe it will work out well. The most important thing about human is that is the ability to discuss freely. If freedom of information, freedom of knowledge, sharing of knowledge, 
if or if we have a place where we can all converge and do this, I think it will go a long way to solve most of the problems that have uh, that have been identified before us now. We are looking for an independent something where people can assemble. That is this why we want to have you have one importance. So there, you know, we have the National Assembly. Have everything, everything the United Nations uh, has is what we are going to have there. But it's just it's after the format of the United Nations. But there's no it, there's no doubt at all that it is a good organization and um, which. I recommend to support to all Europeans. You see, the more we, we have that type of exercise, the more united we are. Differences would disappear. And um, development, what is more important is that the Yoruba people will develop our children and children's children will grow to to admire the, the nation to which they belong. Another laudable project the Dudua Desena World Assembly is planning to pursue is the promotion of tourism and tourist sites in all of Yoruba states. Yoruba has a very robust and exciting history dating back thousands of years and backed by historical landmarks, both man-made and natural. Unfortunately, many of these sites have not been properly integrated into full-fledged tourist sites, thereby robbing us of tangible tourist attraction revenues and employment creation opportunities. Here you can see the warrior that fought the Kitiwa collaboration, Kriji War of 1877 to 1886. These are the status. This will be the of This is Fabumi, the warrior. And the digging of Okemesi. This is the first meeting point in 1877 of for war heroes. What we are trying to do is Lori Ilene, I've never put up a museum of war history. We just go go go. When we jagun, we get it back up. I'm a cosibe, so that we go and win. I want tourists to search as historian can create by it. I'm a wasibi. In order to be progressive, a people must be united. Even though the Yoruba race has gone through years of bitter struggle and infighting, there must be a time to make a change for the better, and the time is now. The Odudura Descendant World Assembly is determined to channel a course for a greater future for the Yoruba people. The objective is very bloody, and I want everybody to support them so that at the end of the day, the Yoruba sons and daughters will become beneficiaries of their notable objectives. I support the World Assembly or the Dual Descendants World Assembly because it is a grand idea and because it, it, it will help the future development of the Yoruba people. I also hope that all Yorubas will support them and that we can do everything possible to let it grow. We, we, we must do everything, we must work in every way to make a success of that of this world assembly. We shall make it by the grace of God. It is time for the Yoruba nation to take a place in the forefront of human history and lay a foundation for a better future for generations to come. Yoruba, stand up. Stand up tall and be united. The future is here. The future is now.